Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to be sitting down and just playing with some new products. I've not filmed in probably over a week, so today I'm gonna to be doing a trying new makeup solely because I have products that I purchased or that were sent to me that you guys really want my thoughts on, even if I'm behind. It is what it is. And also I wanna do a just chatty get ready with me. I've been struggling with my mental health recently. There's been a lot going on in my personal life and then just, I don't know, some things I wanna chat about. So I'm gonna be trying new makeup but also chatting. So if you're not into chatting, don't know if this would be the video for you. Ideally, I'd rather do like a chatty get ready with me and not use new products, but because I am so behind, and so many of you have requested that I use some of these products or demo them. I feel like I'm just gonna combine the two. I hope you guys are okay with that. I really wanna focus in today on the Lunar Beauty collection. I actually received this in PR, I believe late the night before I left for Florida. Our flight was super early. We had to be up at like three in the morning. So I wasn't able to get a video up on this, but I did take this with me to Florida and I have used it a couple times, but I've not used the eyeshadow palette. I also have the new Say Concealer. Again, I've tried this a couple times, but I haven't actually demoed it. So I wanna demo this for you guys and use their Star Glow Super Gel. So I've used this in the past in a sample, but I'm gonna demo it for you guys today. I did purchase the Wayne Goss uh, collection. So there is a sponge or a puff, I guess, the cream foundation, which this is what's freaking me out. And then the weightless powder. Again, I don't know how this is gonna work for me, but we're just going to play around. I have some other random lip products as well, but I just wanna catch up with you guys. I haven't posted a video in probably like a week, which for me is, you know, not the norm. So I just wanna catch up and we can chat. So if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe. If you enjoy, trying new makeup or just chatty get ready with me's give this video a huge thumbs up it really helps my channel out i will link all the products that i use today down below in my description box and let's go ahead and begin Before I start on my eyes, I did want to mention what's on my chest. I always get asked when I'm wearing this. This is from Soul Body, and it's their face and body makeup in medium 10. This is too deep for me. Honestly, it's one of those things that every time I get online to order a lighter shade, I want to order like two shades down. I literally get sidetracked and forget, and I know, I think it's like subconsciously, I know that Soul Body and ColourPop shipping takes like three weeks. So my brain is like, meh, like I'm like a goldfish. I just have like no attention span, and then I move on to the next thing and I forget. I am going to order a lighter shade because I love this formula so much. It is super dark, like very tan and dark on me. So I didn't realize it was gonna be that dark, but I love the formula, so sometimes I cut it with like a lighter foundation. But the reason I used it is because I tried a new self-tanner off of TikTok and it was not my favorite. I feel like it's just a little splotchy and it was really splotchy when I applied it, almost like it was grabbing to areas that I had sun from Florida. So my chest was looking blotchy, long story short, I used the Soul Body, so I will link it down below. I highly recommend this product, but it does run dark and I myself do need to get a lighter shade, but every time I wear this, I honestly get like five, six, seven comments like, what self-tanner do you use? And honestly, it's body makeup. So now that I've gone over my self-tanning disaster as usual, this is the Lunar Beauty Nude Prism Color Palette. So again, I got this right before I left for Florida. I just did not have time to film, and then when I got home, I had other obligations obligations. I love this packaging. Manny really does a great job. It has like the raised moon on it and it's just so beautiful. It has all these flowers. So these swatch beautifully but I have not applied these to the eyes. So inside you get a ton of neutral mattes. I would say leaning. I would say more warm with some pink tones over here and then the shimmers. Now the shimmers are interesting because they have almost like a glitter to them. They almost feel when you touch them, they're not a cream. They're not like a super shock from ColourPop, but they have a creaminess to them. And then they have like these little tiny fine sparkles that reflect. They're very high shine. They're not like a typical shimmer, in my opinion, from swatching them. So I'm really excited to use these on the eyes. I'm gonna throw some swatches up on the screen as well. Now I am an affiliate with Lunar Beauty. I know a lot of you were super excited for this collection in particular. So you can use my code BABSBEAUTY and you can save 10% off your order. It doesn't work on bundles though. So if you get like the whole bundle, 
you know, it's obviously a deal and you can't use a code, but if you're interested in picking up like the blush palette or this palette, you can use my affiliate code to save 10% off. So I'm really excited to do a look with this. I'm gonna start out with this light sort of peachy tan called I'm Shy. I'm just gonna use this in the crease area. I'm trying a new technique of not like slamming shadows into my crease and more so like doing little brush strokes to place it because I do feel like I get a little bit of choppiness on the inner portion of my eye. I don't know what that is. It's just like the way that my eye creases. So I'm trying to be a little bit more light handed, but I'm just using this as a transition. It's like a really light peachy shade. So recently I have been in the dumps. Just my mental health has just been garbage. I've had some personal things going on. Also, I'm um, just getting like a lot of nasty comments about my acne, <laughs> like nasty comments. And I'm like, okay. And then just like nitpicking, you know, like my Botox and you know, your face doesn't even move and you're negative and you're trying to tear down you know, Jaclyn Hill when I did her review <laughs> and I'm like, it just felt like lately I feel like it's been like a flush of like, I don't know, negativity. And I would say that you guys are honestly like so amazing. Usually I have like no negativity and I feel like my comment section is amazing because I feel like you guys are so sweet to each other and you kind of bounce off each other's energy. But lately I just feel like I've had a lot of like just nasty people talking about like my weight, my acne whatever it may be, my Botox. And it's so interesting because recently I've started to like try not to apologize. We've talked about how I am super hard on myself and I'm always apologizing. Uh, and then it like made me think like, this is why I apologize. Because like when I don't apologize for having acne, then people are like, ew, your face, like fix your face, like get your breakouts, you know, wash your face. Like, you know, and it's like, uh, okay, that really takes a toll on me. I think it's because you you work really hard on a video and then you put out the content and it's like you have a 35 minute video and somebody has to like literally just say nothing about the video but that you have acne and like just tear you down. So it's been kind of a lot of that and I'm like, whoa. Like I just feel like I've been a little bit bombarded which doesn't feel great. So that's been kind of like weighing on me and then I have just some personal issues going on. I haven't really been feeling the best. I've been feeling really tired and just down, I don't know. And I feel like I just kind of go through these like waves. This entire past week, we had literally no sun for like six days straight, all rain, no sun. And it really like kills just how I feel. So this week, actually, I'm excited because it's like gonna be 80 and sunny, which, really helps with how I feel. It's just so depressing when you have no sun. So when I feel really, really horrible, like mentally, I just cannot film. Like I, I cannot sit down when I'm feeling like super bad and just like depressed. So I tried to just give myself a little bit of time to reset and you know, now I'm feeling better. Shocker, one day of sun and I'm feeling better. So to add a little bit more depth, I'm gonna go into the shade Tease. This looks like a really pretty warm brown. So good stuff that's going on is Roscoe has been going to doggy daycare and he is living his best life. So I don't take him every day, I just take him like twice a week. And the place is like really close to my house. So it's just really convenient and he has such a blast and I feel like it's really helping with his confidence. He's quite a sissy boy and he just gets really scared of like new sounds, new dogs, uh, new people, but he's getting better. So I feel like doggy daycare is giving him that confidence. And then he also does go back to the cardiologist. We have an appointment at the end of May. They wanna recheck his heart. Uh, about seven months old. So that'll be, I think he'll be almost seven months at that point. So I'm hoping for good news. I actually took him to the vet, I wanna say like a month ago to get his final shots. And I asked the vet, hey, can you just like listen to his heart? And he actually said it sounded better. So the first time he initially 
found the murmur uh, that alerted me that he might have like a heart defect, it sounded uh, a three, a stage three out of six. But then the last time I took him and he listened to his heart, he actually said he had to really strain to hear it and he would say it was more of a two. Now, that doesn't mean that he's like cured, you know, he has a congenital heart defect, so it's not something that's gonna go away, but he said, if nothing else, it is not getting worse at all and that's what we want. So, very, very hopeful that when we go to the cardiologist, Honestly, I'm hopeful that we don't even have to do medication. I'm hopeful that we just, you know, monitor him. He's had zero symptoms. He's never like fainted or anything like that. If he needs medication down the line, then obviously we would do that. I really was trying to just avoid surgery and I really think that we are going to just because I just don't see them wanting to do surgery when he has zero symptoms. They're going to do a ultrasound of the heart, it's called an echocardiogram, and they're really gonna see if his heart has thickened from working overtime. That's kind of what we're looking for, and we're hoping that it hasn't. So that's the update. Of course, I will keep you updated, you know, after he goes, but I'm trying to think pretty positive here. So I'm gonna mix that shade I use first, and then the shade Bare, and I'm just gonna use a fluffy brush, and I just kinda wanna go over the edges. So my sister got a puppy a little after us, like a few months after us. I feel like she got a puppy or a breed that everybody's like really going nuts over, at least where I live. It's called a Bernadoodle. So it's like a St. Bernard and, is it a doodle or a St. Bernard and a poodle? I think it's a St. Bernard and a poodle. So she got a puppy, a boy, and named him Bruno. And he is three quarters... St. Bernard, and then one quarter, I think, Poodle, if I'm not mistaken. He's about 12 or 13 weeks old, and we took Roscoe over to see him for Mother's Day to hang out with my family. They had a blast. It was like two peas in a pod. I was actually cracking up. I'll throw some video up of them playing. Literally, they played so good together. Roscoe is older than him, but they are about the same size because this dog is going to be like 150 pounds. So anyways, he's a big shaggy cutie. He's busy though. He's in that stage where it's like, go, 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 go. And Roscoe has calmed down a little bit. I would say we're like, you know, maybe an eight out of 10, not, you know, an 11 out of 10, but they had fun. They literally just like chased each other for five hours straight. So it was good. The only thing that sucks is my sister lives like totally across town. And I, I've talked about this before, but my sister is legally blind, so she's never been able to drive. So it's not like she can just like pop over and like bring the dog. So I kind of have to, you know, go over there and make time around her schedule. She works full time, she has three kids. She's a busy, busy lady, but it was fun to get them together. So we're gonna try to make it a point to get the dogs together to play, you know, every so often because they were like besties immediately. So next I'm gonna go into this shade Deeper. This is just the black in the palette. You know, I'm a neutrals girl, so this is like, you know, a palette that I would use honestly every single day. I could honestly live with a bronzer and be good to go. Just throw it in the crease. I'm much more of like a liner lashes type of gal, but I'm gonna use a flat brush and I'm gonna do a wing. So I just like to get the general shape with the flat brush and then I can perfect it with makeup wipes or a Q-tip and then just kind of keep building. But this is really why I like to do my eyes first. Okay, so I have the shape of my wings and I'm gonna go in next, I think to the shade Moody. And I, no, actually classic. I'm gonna use classic and I'm just gonna soften the black. I will say the black in here is more of a soft black anyways. I think the whole, palette is you know supposed to be like one of those more soft glam palettes so i'm just going to take this brush and the lightly go over the wing just to soften it a little bit and then if i need to go back in with the black i can do that now I want to use one of these shimmers on the lid. I just noticed that these were named after some of his friends, which is so adorable. Laura, obviously his best friend, and then Sam, uh, here for the tea that sadly passed away. I know that Manny was super close with her and struggled, so that is so sweet that he did that. I think I'm going to go into the shade Laura, just because it looks like a nice champagne gold. And I am just going to press this on my lid. Yeah, these almost have like a wet feel to them and like vibe. They're very, 
I don't know, like sophisticated sparkle, I like to say. There's no fallout to them either, so they're not like a chunky metallic, but they're not like a ColourPop shadow that you can't pick up. They're definitely uh, an interesting texture, which I really like. Just very like pretty, almost like that glossy lid look. I'm gonna add a little bit of So Icy just right in the center. Yeah, I mean, this is like, bam. And these are dry, by the way. I'm just sort of playing around. And then I'm just going back in with my brush and just sort of going over the edges. So I went ahead and put lashes on. These are Shameless from Glamnetic. And I wanna move on to the face. So I have this Say Beauty Glowy Super Gel. Now I did have a mini size of this from Sephora a while back. This product reminds me a lot of the Rare Beauty Glowy or Illuminating Primer. I was gonna say tinted, no. So this is what it looks like and it's a gel texture and it has a glow to it. I wouldn't say that it is overly dewy, but I still would not put this in my T-zone because I am combo, but it gives your skin just like a really glowy look. It's a very thin texture because it is that gel formula. The one thing about this, it has a strong, I would say like pollen smell, or I don't know how to describe it, it's just a strong herbal type of smell, which, you know, can be bothersome to some people, but you can see it just gives me a glow to the skin without really adding texture or anything like that. So I like this product. It's very, very similar to the Rare Beauty, which is one of my favorites. And for my T-zone, of course, I'm gonna use my favorite primer, which is the Vanish Airbrush Primer from Hourglass. I'm starting to make a dent. I'm about, I would say a third of the way through. This is a really nice smoothing primer. My pump is not working. What's going on here? Okay, I got a little bit out. I think my pump is broken, which is not really something you wanna see or deal with when you're paying like $60 for a primer, so that's annoying. Okay, so now let's get into the Wayne Goss. So I wasn't gonna pick this up. I had a few requests and then I thought, you know what, let me just try it out because I really was intrigued by the puff. So you can get this as a set, which is what I did from Beautylish, $76 and you get the cream foundation, you also get the powder, and then there's this puff. This is the Poreless Beauty Puff and it's $10 I think by itself. So the first thing is I usually don't like a cream foundation Typically, they just don't go well with my texture, my oily T-zone, but I want to try this out. So let's start out with the foundation. It's a classic cream formula, glides on smoothly, minimizing the look of pores, lines, skin texture. It says, pick up a small amount with the poreless beauty puff. A little goes a long way. Using gentle yet firm pressure, uh, apply to skin in downward strokes for the smoothest possible finish. That's basically what it says. Now here is the thing. The shades on this were a train wreck. Like I was like, what? Like I didn't know what shade to get. And then by the time I ordered this, a lot were sold out. Eight was the shade that I was kind of forced to get. And that one looks more warm. I think it's gonna match, you know, the self tan and body makeup I have. It definitely is a cream formula. I do wanna feel it. So it is thin or it feels very thin, but, Cream formulas are honestly probably better for, I would say, a dry skin type. It doesn't look like it has a lot of coverage, but we will have to see. It says a little goes a long way. Now I wanna grab this. This is the puff, right? So this is the Smooth and Set, the Poreless Beauty Puff. So this says, a double-sided applicator can be used to apply liquid and cream formulas as well as powders. And then it says to apply foundation, pick up a small amount with the smooth side of the puff. Use gentle yet firm pressure and then apply the, you know, downward strokes. But then to apply powder, dip the velour side into powder, shake off and then pat into skin. So let me open this and see. I am a huge fan of the Beauty Blender Power Pocket Puff but more so for powder. I don't really use it to apply creams or liquids. Okay, so I just looked up his video. He prefers to use the smooth side for creams and liquids and then the more fluffy side for powders. So that's what I'm gonna do. It says that this is a buildable formula, but it is classified as full coverage. It has a satin finish. The shade range was just weird for me because I know he's self-funded, 
it wasn't that he only had, I think, 12 shades. It was the fact that the shades had like massive jumps. And I feel like a lot of people, <clears throat> excuse me, are gonna have a hard time finding a shade. I'm gonna take the puff and just grab a little bit and see what happens here. So I heard that like a little bit goes a long way. I'm not seeing any coverage, so hold on. Okay, I've picked up a little bit more, and I've seen certain people say pressing gave them a better finish. Now he says to do downward. Okay, so it's definitely offering some coverage. I wouldn't say it's full like off the bat though, if you go in with a light hand. Okay, so I'm just gonna start on this side here. So it definitely feels very emollient. I saw a lot of people saying like they were getting brush strokes if they didn't buy the puff or they just prefer to use a brush. And I can see like how it's having a hard time sticking to my nose. It's one of those that transfers. Like I feel like every time I put my sponge down, it moves when I'm trying to blend other products. So it can be a little bit finicky to apply. So this is what the foundation looks like. I don't know if I agree with the full coverage claim solely because every time I try to build it, transfers or it lifts it's just one of those like the cream foundations on my skin i feel like if i touch my skin it would just lift right off it does feel lightweight and i didn't use a lot i mean i feel like this is going to last you for a long time but it's having a hard time sticking to certain areas around my nose especially like i feel like i just keep trying to sort of like press in the coverage and then it moves somewhere else. I mean, I feel like it looks okay, but I already pretty much know this is not gonna wear well. I also would say that this is going to crease. I don't have smile lines, uh, but just right here, it's looking heavy, and I almost felt like I already had a crease, like just in my chin area, which is not something I typically deal with. So now let's move on to concealer. I have the new Say Beauty Hydra Beam Sheer Brightening Under Eye Concealer. So they sent these over. They sent over the shade one and two. I think today I'm going to use two. It has an interesting doe foot and it is sort of similar to that LYS in the sense that it's really kind of like you have to kind of yank it out. I think because the doe foot I don't know, it has like this curve on it. So this is a radiant light coverage concealer, which I do agree with. So let me swatch these for you. This is the shade two, and this is the shade one. I don't know actually. I think maybe I'll, we'll start out with two and then see. Now this is a very hydrating concealer. People ask me if it's similar to like Kosas or LYS, I would say, even more hydrating than both of those, but less coverage. So this for me is a concealer that I would wear with like minimal makeup, no makeup makeup, glowy tinted hydrators. I used it with the double wear, I think once, and it had a hard time sort of meshing in with the double wear. Now keep in mind double wear is like locked and loaded matte, but I would just definitely use this with like a tinted moisturizer or something glowy. So I'm going to apply this as I normally would. Definitely has that skincare type of feel. It's pretty, I would say, emollient. Like you can feel when you put it on that it is going to be hydrating. So that is the shade two. And then I'm gonna take one just to clean up under my wings and brighten. I think I'm gonna add just like a little bit right in the center here. To blend this out, I'm gonna use the sponge that came with the Lunar Beauty new collection. It's really, really soft. So I'm gonna use this just to blend it out. Yeah, I already know, like, as I blend this, I can just feel the Wayne Goss lifting. It's so frustrating. I don't know if it's just like my skin type, but it's just like transferring off. Anytime anything touches this foundation or just really hydrating, like skincare infused, cream foundations, it lifts everything else off. So this is what it looks like built up. Again, you're not gonna be able to cover everything with this. It is light coverage, but I do think it's a nice option if you really like minimal makeup. The more I sit here, I feel like my face is getting so incredibly oily for my own sanity. I think I wanna use the Huda Beauty in the center of my face and then play around with the Wayne Goss maybe like on my forehead area because I really, I can already tell this is super, super, super just like 
hydrating. It's too hydrating for me, and I'm already feeling like things are looking greasy. By the way, have any of you been watching Ozark? It's so good. I think this is the final season. I hope it's not, but I wanna say it is, and I'm so sad. It's one of my favorite shows. Wendy kills that role. Like she is, she just kills it. Her facial expressions, oh, it's hilarious. So I've set my face except for my forehead area. I do want to try out this powder. This is the Weightless Powder in Translucent. I think there's just one shade. So this retails for $28. It says, an invisible loose powder that sets foundation with a velvet matte finish. Now, I thought I heard someone say that this had some sort of like shimmer or glow in it, which is why I didn't want to put it in my T-zone because I'm already struggling with the foundation. And I also heard a couple people say that this is like insanely finely milled to the point of being super messy. It's one of those like super just like white powders. So I am taking some on the puff and just kind of rolling it together and going to set. Could be that the foundation is just so emollient. It doesn't look bad, but I'm seeing just like a couple areas right here that look patchy, like they've lifted off. And I think it's just the foundation is going to transfer. Like when I put bronzer on, I'm actually gonna say a prayer. So I went ahead and did my bronzer off camera. Uh, I used the Victoria Beckham Duo. I'll link it down below. And then I used the Melt Pencil in my waterline. I wanna finish off the eyes. I'm trying to actually just finish this video. I got some sad news. Uh, somebody that's near and dear to me, their dog is super ill and they have to put him to sleep today. I just got off the phone with her and it's just emotional, so. But I wanna get this video done. Okay, I'm gonna finish this video. I can't talk about it because I obviously am a mess. So I'm gonna go in to Moody and just put this on the lower lash line. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm telling you, life has just been, oh, I can't, I can't even talk about it because I'm a train wreck. So I wanna go ahead and get into the blush palette. It has the same gorgeous packaging and you get six blushes in here. Now, of course, I'm really into the bright blushes, but if you haven't tried the Lunar Beauty blush formula, it's super buildable. It's not like crazy clown cheeks. It's not hard to work with, but I think today I'm gonna mix the peach. Let's just start out with the peach and then I'll move into adding this. So I'm gonna start applying the peach, which is really like a subdued peachy shade. I hate this foundation by the way, so there you go. <laughs> Shocker. But you know, we're just gonna roll with it. I can already tell like it is just looking not good in my T-zone. Actually everywhere, I feel like it's just gonna come off. So there's that, but you know. So this is what the peach shade looks like. It's very, very soft and neutral. I wanna amp it up with the shade Blaze, which is that beautiful like burnt tone. I'm gonna keep this more far back and like bring it up but just look at how beautiful that is. So I prefer, as we know, <laughs> punchier blushes. And I'm actually going to pull some just over the center of my face because this foundation just is truly a train wreck. So I'm gonna take a dab of this bright pink, like literally a dab just to really punch this up. So obviously the more punchy shades you need, you know, a light hand with if you have, you know, a lighter skin tone. Look how pretty. Don't judge based on the foundation because I'm not feeling that, but the blush is so pretty. I love, love, love colors like this. And I know Manny himself loves more of like a neutral tone. So I feel like you kind of get the best of both worlds in this palette. You can really punch it up if you want to like me. For lips, I'm gonna go in with my Refi Beauty Lip Liner. This is a new shade called Dusk. I bought this during the end of the Sephora sale. It is a deeper pink tone. For lipstick, I was in Ulta the other day and I came across the Buxom Full-On Plumping Lip Matte. I somehow missed this launch. I picked up the shade Brunching 
And I actually really like this formula so far. I would say it's more of a sort of like a velvet feel, very thin texture. I wouldn't say it's like a dry down matte where it's cracking and it's transfer proof. This is a more hydrating formula. So I'm gonna use this today. See how it almost has like a, I don't know, like maybe like an oil mixed in. I'm gonna shake it just because maybe I needed to shake it. It's like a whipped formula. Has a nice scent, just like their other lip creams. Now I'm not sure about the plumping aspect. I don't feel anything as of yet. And the other day when I wore it, I guess I didn't really think about that. But I like the texture of it because it's not like suction dry down. It's not sticky. It just feels like a really thin, sort of like moussey texture. Now to finish off the look, I do wanna go in with one of the Lunar Beauty lip oils. So there's three in this collection. They are all basically sheer. So I don't really think you need all three. I would just grab, you know, one depending on your preference. So the first one is Expose Me, and this truly just is clear. Now Manny doesn't love sticky, ooh. These smell so good. Mm. Okay, so I guess you wanna choose, you know, which scent, because I think they all have different scents. The second one is Dare Me, and then the third one is Kiss Me. Ooh, watermelon. Yes, I think. So honestly, whatever, you know, scent you like, or if you wanna get all of them, but they're really just super high shine. There's no pigment to them. So I'm gonna go in with Kiss Me. And Manny hates sticky. So they're not sticky. They're just super comfortable. Ooh. Super high shine. Very thin formula. All right, guys. So here's my finished makeup look. Trying new makeup. I have some hits and then I have some misses. So let's start out with the Lunar Beauty Nude Prism Palette. I pretty much knew I was going to love this. I love the packaging. I love the formula on this. But really the colors. This is what I reach for. I love neutrals, and if I do a shimmer like I did today, I typically do like to stay in the neutral realm. Like I mentioned before, the shimmers have this beautiful creaminess to them. They don't feel like a typical powder. There's no fallout, and they just press so beautifully on the eye. They give you almost like that wet look, a little bit of that glitter look, but no like chunky glitter. The black was more of a sheer black, so I did have to build that up, but I didn't notice with the browns that I used, so overall, I love the tones in here. I like that it's half deeper tones, half more like transition brow bone, and then you have the metallics in the center. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful palette, and honestly, this is the colors that I reach for 99% of the time. Moving on to the Say Super Gel. Again, this is very reminiscent to the Rare Beauty. It's essentially just a glowy gel-based primer, so it gives you a nice, hydrated, glowy look. I would put this just on the, you know, tops of my cheekbones, forehead. This is a thin texture and it's not overly emollient, meaning that it's not going to add a layer of like greasiness under your foundation. The only thing I don't love is the scent is quite strong and it does smell like pollen or flowers. So if you're sensitive to that, just be mindful. But it does give you a beautiful glow and it's a very thin texture. So I like that it's not thick and goopy or adding like a layer of just like gunking on my pore area. So I like this, but for me, I think I still prefer the Rare Beauty. Unfortunately, not surprised that the Wayne Goss Cream Foundation did didn't work for me. Anything that's in a pot or cream tends to be extremely greasy and emollient. This, I can't stand how I feel like it's transferring. When I touch my skin, even after setting it heavily and using a mattifying primer, it just feels, again, like those skincare infused foundations that just don't work for me. It would not stick to my nose and it's patching off already on my chin. I've had it on for like an hour. Also, I feel like my texture just looks super enhanced, especially in my T-zone. I have a crease in my chin area already, which is something I don't deal with like ever. So for my skin type, it's just way too emollient, too hydrating. I also really felt like the coverage was maybe like medium, you could build it, but then it gets heavy. I've been hearing sort of mixed reviews, but I don't know if I've seen anyone really like go bananas loving it. Now the puff I think is okay. I'd like to keep using it 
with other foundations and I would be curious to use the uh, flat side with maybe like my favorite foundations and see if I like that. It feels very similar to the Beauty Blender one that I love. So I feel like this is something that I would use just because I already love puffs but I don't know if it's anything like crazy different in my collection. And the translucent powder, I'm still going to have to test out. It's a very thin formula, very, very almost like an HD type of powder, which typically isn't my go-to. I go for something in the middle. The Laura Mercier translucent powder can be a little bit heavy, and then this kind of powder can be very, very finely milled. I like to go in the middle with like the Huda Beauty. So this I'll have to keep trying, but again, I don't notice anything like, wow, I hate it, but... I didn't notice anything special either. No surprise here, my favorite thing of the day is the Lunar Beauty Blush Palette. I just love blush, and like I said, these two shades are just gorgeous. So you can stay in this realm if you want to do more neutral soft blush, but if you're like me, you're going to want to dip into the bright shades. I love this formula. It doesn't enhance my texture. It's not, you know, thick and overly pigmented to where I feel like I can't blend it out. These are obviously more pigmented, so just one dab and you're good, but these are more of a buildable formula on my skin tone. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful palette. I want to see more of these. I know this is a second blush palette, but I'm like, give me more. I'd like to see like volume three, four, five, and just change up the colors and the finishes. But overall, I love this. I mean, I'm a blush fanatic, so I'm not surprised. I almost forgot to talk about the concealer from Say. So this is definitely radiant, hydrating, light coverage. It's one of those that's going to give you some brightness if you get the right shade, but it's not going to cover blueness. It's not going to cover dark circles. Now, I would be curious to try this with a color corrector. I've not done that yet, but I feel like comfortable enough. I mean, I don't really struggle with my under eyes as bad as I do like my redness and my texture. So I'm okay with like a little bit of blueness coming through. It doesn't really bother me. But if you're looking for high coverage, this is not it. If you have dry, dry under eyes and you like that skincare type feel that's very hydrating, this may be for you. In terms of the Refi Beauty lip liners, I really like the formula, but I have noticed after owning my other colors for a couple weeks, they tend to get really dry. So you almost have to warm them up on your hand before you go in and use them if you haven't used them in a few days. This is definitely a long wear formula and with that they are drier now it does also have like a sealant not my favorite i don't really use it i just prefer to use a lip liner but i really love the colors and how long they wear i'm also enjoying the buxom matte liquid lipstick i actually have not heard anyone talk about these i hadn't heard about the release when I was in Ulta, I walked by and I'm like, what's this, matte? And I started swatching. I just like how it's not that dry down, crusty, cracky, you know, really, really like sucks all the moisture out of your lips. This is just comfortable and that's really what I go for most of the time. So I'd probably pick up another shade. I do feel now a little bit of like that minty tingle, but it's nothing that's like painful, but I definitely felt it like a few minutes after applying. And then lastly, the Lunar Beauty lip oils. I love the scents that he does on his lip products. They just smell so good. Again, I would have liked to see a pigmented lip oil, but that's just me personally. I know a lot of people really like Sheer. This is not sticky. It smells incredible. It's high shine. It's one of those that you can throw on with a lip liner and be out the door or just use it alone. So I hope in the future he comes out with lip oils with like a tint to them or a pigment. I would really love to see that. Okay guys, so that is everything for this trying new makeup. We had some hits and we had some big misses. Typically how it goes, whenever I try new complexion, I pretty much know it could go left very quickly. So I will link all the products down below. I'm sorry for just being a little bit quiet and down halfway through the video. Just getting news that someone I care about is losing their beloved pet today and kind of deciding if I want to say goodbye just really brings up grief issues that I personally still have. I can't talk about it, so I just want to say I'm sorry. Hopefully better days are ahead. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed just catching up with me and seeing my thoughts on new releases. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you in the next video.